cannot go out of the complex. And that's okay, but here's what got me. There are no facilities. No facilities, so if you get there at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, they say people actually came there to enjoy the, the new year with diapers on, grown folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cry <crowd> shame. <laughs> Seriously, with diapers on, because you cannot leave back out of the complex because of security. So you got people who want to party so much and be a part of this world that they actually come with diapers on. <laughs> to stay and allow folks to, so they can say they was a part of what the world is doing. I find that appalling. Why would they even announce it? <laughs> That's how bad people want to be a part of this world. Mm, mm, mm. You know, folks ain't worried about being a part of Christ. I'm sure that all the churches got bathroom facilities. <laughs> yeah, all right. yes. But see, Jesus came to change that kind of behavior. Because see, he wants you to understand that you don't have to stand out in the world alone like that. And you don't have to go through all that kind of foolishness just to be a part of what the world is doing. That's why he tells the church he's coming here out from among them. See? Instead of being out in the place all day long with a diaper on, we are in a facility at night that we brought in the New Year rejoicing and praising Jesus Christ for the work that he did. Not for a ball coming down, but for the Holy Ghost and for the Holy Ghost and the Spirit and Jesus Christ himself coming down. Yes. That we might have the right yes. to the tree of life. Yes. <laughs> Jesus' goal is to change the negative into the positive. Change confusion into enlightenment. Change suffering into blessings. And failures into victories. And most of all, sinners into saints. Yeah. I'm reminded of the woman that the Pharisees brought to Jesus. And she brought this woman to Jesus and he brought her to him because he wanted, they wanted Jesus to admonish this woman. They wanted Jesus to speak ill of this woman. And he brought this woman, they brought this woman to Jesus and said this woman committed adultery. But what gets me? Where was the man? But they brought the woman. And they wanted Jesus to well, condemn this woman. But because of who Jesus is and the compassion of Jesus, rather than Jesus condemning the woman, he showed her compassion and he blessed her. And he said, go and sin no more. Yeah. That's the compassion of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. See, more folks would have condemned them. Mm -hmm. See, and that's what we have to be careful when we have to show people compassion when we go out there and witness them. People know they yeah. sin. Yes. You don't have to go out there and tell a person about how bad they're doing. What you need to go out there and tell them is show them compassion and show them the love of God that they will understand that they don't have to live in sin. Because we have a God that loves them and can show them compassion and then they can go and sin no more. Amen. Because the Bible said, he that without sin, let him cast the first stone. So in other words, we have a compassion to God that will allow us that even in the midst of our shortcomings, even in the midst of when we don't know which way to turn, he can show compassion to us. Yes. Yes. Jeremiah 31 and 3 said this, The Lord have appealed of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting or an eternal love. Therefore, with love and kindness, and listen what that word, anybody, you know, we don't take time to understand what God is telling us when he used certain words in the Bible. He said with love and kindness. You know what love and kindness mean? He said with affection yeah. and devotion yeah. and tenderness yeah. have I drawn you. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about I've drawn you with affection, devotion, and tenderness have I drawn you. See, God don't, don't draw you with telling you how bad you are. He draw you by telling you how good you can be. He draw you by telling you how good he is and what he can do for you. 
We don't need to go out there and tell people how bad they're doing in life. You know, I hear sinners like to say, God don't like ugly. <laughs> and sometimes they're the ugliest one out there. <laughs> and I ain't talking about how they look. <laughs> I'm talking about what they're doing. Yes. And you folks always like to say, God gonna get you. Folks living in sin, they think God is a God that sit up there and fight their battles for them and God gonna, and they use God as a way of getting back at people. God gonna get you, you wait, God gonna get you for what you did. Uh, as Christians, we shouldn't have that mindset. Uh, we should have a mindset that God wanna draw you in so that you don't have to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, too often we place too much emphasis on what we don't have. Then we forget about what we do have. Sometimes we get so caught up in to what we want that we fail to appreciate and enjoy the blessings that are right in front of us. You know, there was a, there's a book called Positive Thinking. And in that book, this guy was, had a gold mine. And he dug in that gold mine for years and years. And he got tired of digging. You know, the Bible said, don't get weary in well doing. And he, anyway, he would dig and dig and dig and dig and dig for many years. But he couldn't strike gold. So what he finally did, a big company came in and told him, said, okay, we're going to buy this mine from you. And so the man sold the mine to this company. The company went in there, and the main stream of gold was only three feet away. <laughs> Peter dug a little bit more. Sometimes you make a little more effort to do what God have you to do. Maybe your blessing is only three feet away. When you don't give up, that's why he said don't get weary in well-doing. For you'll reap if you faint not. What he's saying is don't get weary this year. Don't get tired of doing what God asks you to do because you think it ain't there. Or you think he don't hear you. Or you think he don't have it for you. We need to quit using excuses that, well, if, it didn't get, if, if, if God didn't give it to him, it must not meant to be. But if he said, I give you the desires of your heart and that's what you want, then it's not about what God didn't meant to be. What you have to understand is God wants you to have it. What you need to do is reflect on yourself. Take a look in the mirror and say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not receiving this thing that I want? Yeah. That desires of my. If it's out of your will, let me know that too. Yeah. 